Well, I was going to do this on a live stream, but since StreamYard is becoming inherently useless and highly annoying, um, I thought I would do it in video form instead. Um, welcome to the BL plan to save boxing. Now, recent problems, okay, um, over the last whole number of years with getting undisputed fights at heavyweight, multiple times missed out on chance of with Wilder, Joshua, um, Fury, Joshua, Fury, Usyk, uh, missing out on undisputed, Spence, Crawford. Boxing has problems, and we all know it. We all know that boxing is mired with problems, with corruption, with all kinds of things. And part of the problem is boxing has never really had an overall structure, like many other sports have. And boxing needs structure to survive, because boxing at the moment, it's, it's like a limping donkey. Um, you know, it's just limping along, you know, going from one disaster to another, getting odd decent fight here or there, um, like we're getting... Benavidez plant which is a well decent fight a well good fight I saw one poll and who was going to win was split 50-50 you know on the poll of over 2,000 people it were full 50-50 split showing that it's a fight that we don't know what's going to happen but too many fighters are taking 80-20 fights 70-30 fights that they're pretty much you know where the 80% chance probably going to win 90% chance they're going to win 70% you know, we're just tired of it. I think we're just tired of it. And, you know, none of the promoters, certainly not the alphabet bodies, who are, to me, one of the inherent problems in boxing, are going to do anything to create the solution because, you know, they're the power base at the moment. You know, they, they control the sport. The promoters control the matchmaking. The fighters now control the matchmaking. You know, the fighters now control all terms and conditions by the look of it. You know, the alphabet better sit at top of it, awarding fighters rankings at number one when they've never beat a top 10 fighter. You know, the fighters walking into title shots. I'm going to go more into that um, on my first slide. But I am going to document ahead a fully laid out plan, a fully laid out structure that could be applied to boxing, okay, that would resolve many or most or all of the issues we currently have. Because when you go around boxing community now, whether it be online, you know, websites or podcasts or videos, the disillusionment is now getting to such a high level. You know, people are now assuming that big fights are going to happen. People are assuming Jamel, Jam, Jamal Charlo is not, never going to fight Golovkin or Andre or Benavidez. We, the, people are starting to assume these things are never going to happen. We're assuming now we'll not get an undisputed maybe for years if Usyk Fury, with Usyk Fury falling through. You know, many people are now saying that, well, you know, Spence isn't going to fight Crawford, so he's going to go to like middleweight, PBC keeping everything in-house. Uh, another big problem, you know, promotional companies now keeping things in in-house, which means that the talent pool that their fighters face is of a much lower proportion, um, limiting the scope of the opponents that can fight, um, limiting, ultimately, the fights we get. You know, it's all good for PBC to keep everything in-house, but who suffers? The boxing fans, the sport. Okay, because we don't get this top-level PBC guy fighting this top-level Golden Boy PBC guy or a top-level DAZN guy or, you know, a top-ranked guy or a top-ranked guy and a Golden Boy guy, and a, you know, for the most part. Some are worse than others. PBC, you know, are quite terrible now for in-house matchmaking. Even to a point now where fighters rely on that. They rely on in-house matchmaking, okay, so they don't have to fight top-level fighters from other promotional networks or fighters who, you know, do their own promoting, etc., etc. And it, it has to stop at some point. You know, boxing cannot just go on forever um, limping along like a, like, a, like a diseased pig of, of some kind or other. So, coming up on the first slide, okay, coming up on the first slide is going to be, I'm going to go through some problems of boxing, um, and we all know what these problems are, you know, I could probably pull beats, anyone, blood boxing, anyone, onto a live stream and say, right, go, tell me all problems in boxing, and they're going to say many of the same things, there may be some differences here or there, um, but there's inherent problems and inherent obstacles that continually come up, that continually scupper fights. You know, the devaluing of the world titles, um, of being a world champion, is now to a point where you can be a fighter who's never even beat a top 15 fighter, but because your promoter's friendly with a alphabet body, you can get as a number one contender, fight for a vacant belt, become a world champion in hyphens, and you've never even beat a top level fighter. You know, when that is the case, there's serious problems. So let's go on to slide one. This is going to be a two-part video, a big video, both of them. 
So some of the problems in boxing, oh my goodness, we could go on for hours. Okay, we could go on for hours. One of the things, okay, that I know really annoys me, not only for my enjoyment at sport, but also for fighters' legacies and fighters' careers, is fighters now are too inactive. Okay, fighters are just too inactive. You know, we're at a point where Jamel Jamel Charlo, keep calling Jamal Jamel, Jamal Charlo hasn't fought for nearly two years. He's still a WBC champion. He hasn't fought for nearly two years. You know, his resume and legacy is in the gutter. He's not for any top, real, any of the real top middleweights. Andrade, Golovkin, you know, he hasn't even fought a Murata. He hasn't fought a Mungia, although part of that's down to Mungia as well. You know, he's on his tomato cam run. But fighters are just too inactive. So the BL solution combats that, okay, in a number of ways that I'll go through through the two-part video. Now, top-level fighters not facing each other. I mean, this drives us insane. You know, we look now and say, how many, someone highlighted it recently, how many at WBC top 15 has Tyson Fury fought? Oh, he's fought two. Two of them. Dillian White and Deontay Wilder. Wow, that's it. It's not good enough. Top level fighters have to start fighting each other. And this is a phenomenon that has gone on a long time in boxing, right? Sugar Ray Robinson, even before that to Jack Johnson. Fighters demanding their own splits and terms. This is now often even over the promoters and the managers. You know, like with Tyson Fury now. Tyson Fury is a master of his team negotiating deals than him using Instagram or Twitter to completely derail all the negotiations that have gone on for three months and start demanding his own cuts, his own splits, his own terms. That is another major problem. Errol Spence Crawford recently, Errol Spence rumoured to be wanting this percentage, that percentage, this clause, that clause. It's becoming inherently a problem where many big fights are not happening because these self-entitled divas like Mariah Fury and all these other fighters, okay, are starting to become too powerful in the sport. They think they're bigger than the sport and bigger than the world, half of them. Another big problem is rematch clauses, rematch clauses, and even more rematch clauses. Now, Hatman will be one at first to applaud this from me, but there are too many rematch clauses. Now they're being added half at time, when rematch clauses normally don't get added. You know, the promoters to protect their investment are adding rematch clause after rematch clause. So two guys fight in February, say two guys fight in April. Okay, then one of them wants eight months off. So that takes it to December. Then they schedule the fight for the next June. So those two guys have fought twice in two years. Because then when they fight in June or July in the rematch, they don't fight for the rest of the year. Sometimes they'll get a fight in, in December. Other times they won't. Then they'll leave it while the next match. So that one rematch clause has slowed up the entire division for 18 months. Rematch clauses are slowing up the divisions. They are keeping fighters in top contender spots, mandatory spots, rising contenders, all away from title fights because the champions have constant rematch clauses. That has to stop. A broken ranking system. Blood Boxing will, you know, applaud me saying this, okay, but he's been going on about it for years. The ranking system is trash. Fighters appear from nowhere and get put number two or number three when they ain't even fought any top 15 guy or top 20 guy. Other fighters fighting in a lower division, you know, will move up a division and appear in number one. When other guys in that division have been fighting for years and fighting top contenders there, they all get usurped on this ranking system which doesn't even seem to use common sense. Fighters often get ranked on who are favourites rather than what they've actually done in the ring. And a ranking system needs to factor what the fighter has done in the ring. Not who Gilberto Mendoza likes or was his champion at a lower weight. So, oh, straight into number one, straight into number one. Straight into a final eliminator. Never fought in division. Other guys in top 10 have fought in division six years. Had some tough fights against top 10 fighters. No, they all get usurped. Another thing is TV companies. I mean, ITV don't really like meddling too much in boxing. Uh, because there's too many big fight pullouts, injuries, scuppering big fights that they spend money on. Uh, HBO famously walked away from boxing. Now, rumour is Showtime may walk away from boxing. And part of the problem there is they're hesitant to invest in the sport because they're not guaranteed big fights. They're not guaranteed dates. 
Okay, so a TV company will sign a, a promotional thing with a a, a, a promotion a TV company. I'll sign a, a a deal with a promotional company like PBC. Okay, and they'll get so many days, and then PBC are struggling to put big fights on that will attract viewers because none of fighters want to fight each other because they're demanding their own splits because they want a rematch clause. The other guy don't want it because they think they deserve more. You know, then injuries are added. So TV companies are really hesitant to invest in sport because there's no structure. And, you know, like I put there, there's no structure in boxing whatsoever. When you go to any sport, the Premiership, Formula One, all these other sports, there are structures. There are even structures in many amateur sports determining amateur rankings. There's many structures. But with a broken ranking system and no structure... Boxing is pretty much like the wild, wild west. Okay, and boxing needs to change. There needs to be a structure. Now, my plan to, you know, my plan to save boxing is a big plan. But, you know, when a sport is limping along like a half-poisoned pig, you know, basically, you know, it needs a big change. And one of the biggest changes boxing needs is finally... Okay, after six decades now, the alphabet bodies need to be replaced. Now, some people... Oh, <laughs> everybody moans about the alphabet bodies, but then everybody says, well, there's no to replace them. No, there can be something to replace them. You know, and if all the worldwide TV networks want to hire me, I will demonstrate to them how they do it. Okay, I will demonstrate to them how they do it. And many fighters will have no choice because if they want to earn big money, they'll have to go along with it. If they don't want to go along with it, they can never be a world champion and they're never going to get on that big money. So it's up to them. If they want to be, if they want to be Mariah Fury, uh, you know, or or, Whit, or or Whitney Spence or any any of these other fighters, okay, then that's fine. But this new BL plan will punish them for that. And, you know, they'll be able to fight, but they won't be able to fight for the title in the format I've created. And they won't be able to, you know, fight the big names. So they won't earn money. So if they want to earn money, drop your egos. If you don't drop your egos, you won't be fighting top-level fighters and you won't be earning big money and you won't be fighting for world titles in divisions. So the choice is then theirs. Keep your ego high, keep thinking you're more important than the entire planet and lose out on almost everything. And let your career drift along fighting lower level fighters. If you want to do that, that's fine. But the alphabet bodies have to go. They are one of the major problems. So how do we replace the alphabet bodies? The World Boxing Super Series was a start. But it needs expanding. Okay, The BL solution to say boxing is the yearly World Championship title tournament system. Okay, Now... Basically, the premise for this, okay, is that the alphabet bodies would get wiped out by this, okay? Because frankly, you know, people, most people in the street can't map the WBA interim, the WBA mocker, locker, chocker, docker, gold in this, that, interim, 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 regular, world, super, uh, uh, well, regular is world, but you know what I mean, uh, emeritus, diamond, gold, this, super champion, regular champion, this, that, the third. We need a set structure where fighters compete, where fighters compete, okay, over a year and i've got the entire structure on slides for you and we will go through it okay but basically fighters each year fight in the world championship tournament title so at the end of the year okay to give you an idea the winner of the light heavyweight tournament okay will be the world light heavyweight champion it wouldn't happen this year but say 2024 that goes on their resume. They no longer need world title belts. They are the light heavyweight champion at world that year. One title, one tournament, one ranking system. Okay? And even the rest of boxing is catered for under my plan. Okay? But this is what boxing needs. The alphabet bodies need to go. They cause so many problems forcing mandatory even now scuppering unifications, allowing some unifications, they're not allowing other unifications, fighters win three unified belts, then six days later they're stripped to one, I mean are they supposed to set a fight up against a mandatory contender in six days, I don't know, 
okay? But it's just mired in corruption. Mired in corruption with all the belts, the multiple ratings, fighters not being rated in the same rating system, which to me is major. You know, the champions not being rated, uh, the WBA champion and IBF champion not being rated in WBC. A guy who's rated in WBO don't pay sanctioning fees to WBA, so he can't be included in theirs, but he's ranked in WBC and WBO, so he's not in WBA. You know, the constant nonsense is just destroying the sport because fans and casuals, especially casuals who dip in and out of sport, they can't follow this. I mean, even most boxing fans on YouTube struggle to follow everything going on. You try and mesmerise every world champion there is now at five main belts, including WBA regular, and then do the same in two weeks. It's just ridiculous. So, how does my system work? So, basically, let's take a look at this. This is an example, okay, of how this system works. So, as you can see, I'm using Transnational's current top 10 heavyweights as a guide to explain to you how this works. So, we have one, Alexander Usyk, I think, yeah. Two, Tyson Fury. Three, Joe Joyce. Four, Deontay Wilder. Five, Anthony Joshua. Six, Andy Ruiz Jr. Seven, Dillian White. Eight, Otto Valin. Nine, Luis Ortiz. Ten, Joseph Parker. Okay. Now, as you can see there, Joseph Parker and Luis Ortiz are listed as reserve, okay, that happens at the end of the year, I'll go through all that, how it works, okay, but they can fight through year, they can fight other fighters through year, they just can't fight those eight, nine and ten, as it says there, are in reserve to fill in for injuries, so they agree to be on standby, if anyone's injured through the tournament, they will step in, okay, they will step in, and if three pit fighters are injured in one year, then you go to 11th place, offer them to step in, if they don't want to, you go to 12th, if they step in, then you put them in, you use a system, okay, where you have a reserve, you've got the top eight, who will take part in the tournament, okay, and then you've got nine and ten in reserve for injuries and things like that, but those in reserve, Ortiz and Parker, while the others are fighting in the tournament, them two guys can still fight other opponents through year, okay, because I've created an entire basic ranking system okay so they can fight to gain points for what i'll explain later now all splits in the tournament devised are 60 40 for the winner no more will fighters say well i'm the big draw i think i sold hundred thousand pay-per-views more than you so i deserve 70 and you deserve 30 or if people think it's a 50 50 fight say no i refuse no i deserve 55 45 he's got to bow to me no there's no more of that Fighters enter the tournament or they don't want to enter and they're, they're kicked out and they can fight lower level op opponents. That's fine. That's up to them. Okay. They'll be held accountable for that. Okay. But all splits are 60-40 to the winner. Okay. The final winner. Okay. The winner of the final fight of the year gets 70-30. Because the other guy, okay, to get to the final is already had two wins of 60%. Okay, then if he doesn't win the final, he gets 30%, the winner gets 70%. That's kind of to reward the champion for being a champion and winning the title that year. Okay, that fighter then is proclaimed, say, I'm using 2024 as an example, is named the 2024 heavyweight champion at world. Now, as I put at bottom there, if boxers want to be divas, fine. They don't enter. There you go. Simple. You want to be a diva? Well, you be a diva. You spend your time fighting Manuel Charles and you spend your time fighting David Prices. Okay, well, all these other guys earn the big money fighting big names. So if you want to be a big diva, you know, then you do that. Bye. Someone else will be brought in to replace you because it's all based. All this is also based on a ranking system that I'll go through later. So they can fight whoever they want. If they, if they, want, if they want their ego to stop them taking part in tournament, then fine by uh, next person down because this tournament is designed that a top 50 will be rated well everyone will score points through year who fights but the top 50 will be considered so if Luis Ortiz says oh no I don't want to fight I don't want to I don't want to take part in the tournament then Joseph Parker's in reserve number 11 is offered the reserve place where they can break into the tournament and earn big money now Similar to World Boxing Super Series, okay, these are then mapped out, and I've done a little bit of an example later on a, a, a further slide, but this is the basic format, and this format would work across all divisions. Now, some fighters in top 10 would not want to take part. That's fine. You step aside then. Simple as that. And if the fans are like, oh, we don't want to, we don't want to. Tough. If they decide they want to step aside, then they just step aside. They're not included. You try and imagine for a second... 
if this structure was brought in across all divisions every year where a yearly world champion is announced, no more need for alphabet belts. One champion per division each year. You know, then it becomes on to, well, the guy who wins the 2024, does he get an injury and he's inactive? Does he knock down? You know, because like take Otto Val in there for number eight, he takes part in this tournament. Say he gets through and, and gets knocked out. But say the next year, he doesn't score enough points to get in the top eight. Well, he's not in the next year's tournament. If Alexander Yusik scores enough points through year to get into next year's top eight for 2025, he gets in top eight and he takes his part in the um, draw to determine the ties for the next year's title. So if you say Yusik won the heavyweight championship 2024, he can then re-enter. If he has enough points on rating system, I'll go through later. He can re-enter for 2025 to try and become the heavyweight champion for two years. And that structure will grant us one title, okay, but not only that, it'll grant us a title that they have to earn. It will make being a world champion worthy again, because there won't be all these multiple belts, like 13, 14 alphabet belts, four of what we consider, five if people had WBA regular, you know, then you've got IBO, WBU, WBI, IBA, IBC, you know, you've got all these other things, but that is no good for the sport, because ultimately, you know, it's just miring the sport in... in, in Damaged ratings and fighters not rated here, not rated there. This gives us structure every single year. Can you imagine? I mean, me personally, I don't know about you, but me personally, I'd be really excited watching the fighters fight through here, watching the league table of points to see who's going to qualify for next year. And I'd enjoy watching the fighters panicking near end of year, say like second half of year saying, I ain't got enough points to qualify. I need to fight a higher level opponent to get the points to get in. And all the boxers will be doing that. And they'll be battling each year to try and get those top eight spots. Because frankly, this tournament structure every year, this very quickly will delve into where all the big money is. Yeah, other fighters, if the fight not in the tournament, you know, may be able to earn decent revenues. But the TV networks and, and the media are going to soak this up. It's a tournament structure. Who doesn't love tournaments? How many of us love the World Boxing Super Series because the fighters in it have to fight the fighters they're matched with, then have to fight the winners of the next rounds to determine a winner? This is a simpler system, but it's more deep. It's all the divisions every year. And you know, the fighters, all, all they need is a body to control this, okay? And every fighter who enters the tournament or every fighter in the rating system pays 2% of their purse to that body. That is to award prize money, fights, etc. The 60-40s is determined, you know, on ultimately the money's made for the tournament. Or they could even do it in a thing where, right, round one, you get paid this. This is the fee. You know, 5 million, 60-40 to winner. 60 to winner, 40 to loser. So winner gets 3 million, loser gets 2 million. Next round, maybe 10 million. So winner gets 6 million, loser gets 4 million. And then final could be 15 million, in which case you'll get 70% of that. So fighters could still earn stupid money every year, okay? But it will be dependent on fighting in the tournaments. And getting to the end of the year and becoming the world, the, the, not one of three or one of five or one of 12, the heavyweight champion of the world. The middleweight champion of the world. The super flyweight champion of the world. The lightweight champion of the world. It would give being a world champion meaning. Because these guys to become world champion would have to earn it. And that is something that is now vanishing from boxing. Not only don't you have to earn a title all the time by fighting necessarily one of the best fighters in division... But now you can spend years fighting low-level opponents, keeping titles where you don't even have to fight the best fighters in division. My structure creates a ton of... And I will go into what's happening with rest of boxing. The fighter's not here. Okay, I'll go into that later. Because that all pretty much stays the same. Okay, but I'll explain how that works later. But this is the basic structure of the world title yearly tournament system. All 17 divisions do this. I will explain later how it works, how they come round to it, 
you know, the draws, everything. Okay, I'll go through that in this big two-part video. But this is the basic structure. And I think, I mean, come on, people. Look at those top eight, and you tell me that those broke up into four ties is not mouth-watering. You tell me you would not be beside yourself uh, when I explain how the system works near the end of the year when they've got the ratings in for the next year's tournament, and you see a top eight, and you're like, oh, my God, who's going to fight who? Who's going to fight who? You imagine the excitement of knowing being announced what fighters are entered for next year's world title tournament it will give us a structure it will give us things to look forward to when the tournament's announced there's reserves there okay there's reserves in case of injuries it would help guarantee dates it tv companies could then think right we have guaranteed dates you know we don't have to worry about them all falling through and show being cancelled and etc 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 and you imagine also you imagine also, because other boxing shows like York Hall, you know, this show and that, they'd all carry on as normal. The rest of boxing would carry on as normal. But these tournaments would be for the world titles. The alphabet bodies would no longer be needed. All the best fighters would be fighting each other. You know, like Fury and Usyk are not fighting now because they're rival champions. Because there's too many alphabet belts. They have their own politics. Then they had their own diva demands in. And suddenly it's like impossible to make big fights. In this system, if Tyson Fury said, I'm worth more, I'm not I'm not fighting you sick for 60-40, they say, fine, Tyson, you can step out of the tournament, mate. You you won't fight for every weight title that year. It's up to you, mate. Simple as that. And then if you thought, you know what, I want to, you know, if if Wilder or Joshua or any of them thought, I want to be world champion, they have to beat their fellow top-rated fighters. Now, some people say, oh, yeah, but you'll get a lot. You won't get as many repeats as what you think because if, even if you look at top 10 ratings now, they change on a month or two-month basis. There's constant change in top 10s a lot of time. There's new fighters moving up to division. And I've, if I've even got the system how that works. A fighter moving up a division, okay, and suddenly walking into a world title fight in four months' time, that will be stopped under my system. A fighter going into that division will not disrespect and usurp fighters who fought hard in that division, fought tough fights in that division, trying to get title shots for a guy from a lower division to just waltz into division and we are even having to fight a top 30 guy or even having half at time to have to have a fight at all in that division to walk straight into a mandatory. No, 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 no. That stops with this. With this, we have a yearly structure, a tournament system to give us a world champion every year in every division. And you imagine the cards that they would put on. You imagine one of the cards in early December, because I've even structured how, how the year is broke down. Okay, but you imagine first week in December, you've got three cards. One of them has the heavyweight final, the middleweight final, the superfly final, the minimum weight final. Another card the day after has the light heavyweight final, the light middleweight final, the bantamweight final, and the light flyweight final. And then... The promoters of those fighters can add other fighters who are coming up ratings or whatever on the undercards. But we would be more guaranteed strong, strong cards on the tournament system. Okay? Because like the first round at tournament system, you've got four fights held over two days. So say like you could have Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua, the, the co-main event, Andy Ruiz Jr. versus Joe Joyce, and then other fighters that the two promoters, if they're, if they're from different promoters or from one promoter, they add other lower-rated fighters on as normal. But you would be guaranteed during this tournament system big fights on every card. And the finals towards December, end of November, start of December, I mean, the finals would be something to, you know, really look forward to because at end of day, you know, we would be getting the big finals. The world champions would be announced will have gone through the year. This will promote activity. And the rating system also promotes fighters fighting better opponents. But I'll go through that when I go through rating system and how it works. But basic, as they fight to try and gain enough points to try and get in top 10 for the next year's tournament, where the top eight go in, nine and 10 are on standby. If Ruiz Jr. gets injured, you know, uh, dislocates his shoulder, can't fight, Luis Ortiz will step in. Then if Joe Joyce gets injured we have, uh, or has a virus and he can't fight, Joseph Parker steps in. There's a reserve there built in to back the tournament. So the TV companies know, well, no matter if a fighter gets injured, we are still getting this card. We are still get guaranteed that card on that day. 
you know, one of the big name fighters getting injured won't cancel the card. So we won't lose all the marketing money was spent on it or uh, deal, getting all the promotional deals for that event. You know, we won't lose all that money. We are guaranteed a card which will promote, I believe, more TV companies to invest in boxing and show boxing. Because the need to know that when they're paying for a product, paying a promotional company massive money to secure fight dates, they, they want those fight dates. They want something on those fight dates. They want those fight dates filling. That's why TV companies for the most part and streaming networks will jump all over this. They'll all want a piece of pie. They'll all pay massive money to this organisation, okay, to show these tournaments. And this also removes, this also removes all of this. Well, he fights on ESPN, ESPN, he fights on the zone. So what network is it going to be on? No, the tournament runners sell rights to show the fight. So the zone and ESPN can both pay the fee and show the tournament fights, regardless of whose fights, fighters on them. If the zone want to pay it and ESPN don't, the zone show it and ESPN don't show it. It's that simple. So, I'll go through this initial point on the ranking system, okay? We need a new valid scoring system for yearly rankings, okay? Formula One has a... Some people say it's a bit too barmy, but Formula One has a system where you gain points based on race position. You know, when you look at Premiership, you gain points for win, points for draw, no points for losing. My rating system would look similar to this, Okay, come the start, come mid-December, okay, come mid-December every year, they would have a list like this going from 1 to 50. Fighters below that who don't qualify in top 50 would not be included, but they would publish the top 50, okay? The top 50 ratings for all heavyweights who fought that year. I will go through how the game points uh, in a rough system later. A simple system that's fair to all, that rewards for fighting higher level opposition, okay, doesn't reward as much fighting lower level opposition, and also will promote massive competition between the fighters because, you know, they won't want to say, I'm going to fight a guy who's rated number 40 if a rival opponent who's close to getting into top 10 near end of year is going to fight number 20, and if he wins that, he'll get more points, so I won't be able to get into top 10. My, my point system creates a system where the fighters will be encouraged. They don't have to. They can do what they want. They don't have to fight good opposition. And, you know, this goes for new new professionals and guys who are still inexperienced, you know, etc. My system also gives them time to develop like fighters do now. But most at top 25 are going to be fighting for points every year to build up a point list like this, a ranking system like this, where I've just done this as an example of where the top 15, you know, and the, the top 11 points. So then mid-December at a cutoff point that will be announced each year, with the same day each year, the top 10 will be sealed off. These are the 10 for the tournament. And then 10th and 9th place of the reserve, the eight names above, are the fighters who go into the tournament draw in January. Uh, sorry, end of December. Just before New Year. Tournament draw. Can you imagine how exciting it would be if every December we got the ties for the next year's tournament? So we could look and think, oh, Cro oh Cro Crawford's fighting Virgil Ortiz. Oh, God. Spencer oh, Spencer's drawn Ennis. Etc. Etc. Conor Ben's fighting this guy or that guy. Can you imagine how exciting that would be, knowing we're going to get those fights? Like I said, if fighters don't want to partake, then they'll be pushed to one side and next fighter down. They won't become a world champion that year. If they want to do that five years, they won't win any world titles five years. That's up to them. You know, this also combats the diva system, but this is my basic point system. In part two of my video, I'm going to go through how the point system works and how the tournament system will be structured. Okay, I'm sad I've had to do it this way, but StreamYard needs to get its act together. But part two coming very soon.